future. Good morning, Roger. Good morning, Cindy. How are you? All right. Ah, I see a couple of faces that this morning. I well, no, I just see Taryn. Good morning, Taryn. Good morning, Dr. Terrell. Cindy. <laughs> Solomon. Yay. So, oh gosh, what am I going to talk about today? I tell you, it has been the most difficult 24 hours getting ready to getting ready for you guys. So why I have a question, Dr. Joe. Sorry? I have a question. Yes. Um, so for lab on Thursday for DH11, are we going to do the crystal um, violet because we did the Raman last week or the yes. previous week? Yes. Yes. We're, we're alternating through the first two. Okay. In these weeks, and then we'll alternate to the second two. After. Four weeks. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Cool. Thank uh, you. I have a question, Dr. T. I yes. just see my uh, crystal violet fine, and then I um, couldn't see the absorbance. Uh, one of the column, I couldn't see the number. When I paste, copy and paste it into Excel to generate the the raft. Okay. It it doesn't it doesn't work. Right, right. Let let let's let's look at that. So let me uh, let me do a share here. So um, this is, it's not yours, but it's my uh, canvas, right? And so here's, uh, it's under files, instrumental lab, crystal violet. And I think you, what day are you? Are you Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday? Wednesday, I, Wednesday, uh, the Thursday. Not Wednesday B. The January twenty one. Is January twenty first? Yeah. So here's your here's your here's your data, right? So okay. um, so what you should do is you should download the data like that. All right there, you got your crystal violet data. You can download it, right? Yeah. Comes down here, and then. Um, you want to go to Excel. Uh, I'll do an Excel share here. Okay. Here's Excel, right? You're going to go File, Open. Then you got to navigate to that guy, which is, uh, I think, in Downloads now. Uh, let's see here. Browse. Downloads. Oops. Sheesh. I gotta find the folder where this downloaded to. Oh god. Okay, there it is. All right. Well, anyway. So we've got to download this. From, I think here, there we go. Wait, 155, 2021. Hmm. Oh, so weird. Yeah, 155. Oh, it's CSV. It's CSV. Sorry. Important point. <laughs> when you go browse here and you look for it, you have to change it to uh, look for all files that of this type CSV. Right? So um, 155, 121. So you find your file, then you open it, right? And it should give you um, it should give you these two numbers in these two columns. Yes. Uh huh. 
But yeah. one of the number I couldn't see. And then when I tried to paste it into work to generate uh, Excel to generate the graph, it doesn't work and it's just based on the right, right. Horizontal. Yeah, it's that's um, oops, hold on. I was going to change a freaking share here. So when you do the file open, right, you go file open van whatever you know then um it, it should come up and it should look like this right and these numbers you can all see if you copy and paste them in each each cell will contain a string right and there's going to be no numbers at all does that make sense probably not because you don't know what a string is but now you know what a string is. A string is not a number. Okay. A string is a bunch of letters and number characters. A number is the number 900.0. This, this is a number, right? Because you can you can do math on numbers. You can't do math on strings. Does that make sense? Sorta? Of? Yes. Hopefully. Yeah, thank you. If okay. if it's come up like this, I can generate a, a draft from this one, but Mine is not look exactly the same. I, I have to redo it to see what happens. All right. Uh, email me when you email me and I'll help okay. you. Okay, thank you, sir. All right. So um, let me see here now. Um, it's probably not a bad point to talk about the crystal violet file, right? So I think I'm just gonna share the entire freaking screen here. How's that? There we go. So you guys should see my whole screen here, right? <laughs> oh, God. Uh, so, um, oh, comments are coming in here. I hate, I really hate Zoom. It just really sucks. Oh, Thank you, Diane. <laughs> I'm being all negative. Damn it. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so let's talk about CV briefly. I'm not sure what we'll, we'll talk about um, CV and Rama today and I'll fold in some uh, least square stuff there. And that's, that's really all I've got for you today. Um, so Crystal Violet, if you go to lab here, there's a report template, right? And uh, oops, if you click on it, it gives you useless crap here. So we'll close that and then we will go to download it. Right? And then it downloads as XLSX, save. Now I can open it, this template, right? What? Couldn't open in protected view? Come on. You will open. There you go. Yes, you can open in protected view, whatever that means. So here is um, the uh, boilerplate for the Crystal Violet Lab Report, right? And uh, uh, let's do Vans here. Excuse me, Dr. Taro. Yes. Can you please make the actual Excel uh, screen template a little bit bigger? Like, can you maximize the whole window? Sure. It's kind of hard to see. Okay, all right, all right. I'm gonna do that in just one sec. Thank just you, one sec. And what I'm going to do first, however, is uh, I have to get the data in here somehow. Let's see here. So, um, 
I supposed to put the data here? Let's see here. Let's see if there's a A select data here. I think it already has it. Yeah, series one edit. This is I6. Wait, no. No, S6 and U6. S and U. Huh. Okay. So this is supposed to be in, I, now we've got to go and change the view here. View to normal. Oh, come on. Come on, come on. Normal. How about grid lines? There we go. How about like seeing, well, this is a nasty way to do this. Oh, here we go. All right, so here's where the data are supposed to go in this crystal violet report. Absorbance and uh, epsilon are supposed to go here, right? So our wavelength, absorbance, and epsilon, right? So wavelength and absorbance, they go, they go over here. And I'll, let me just paste them in, then I'll make this larger for y'all. Um, so I'm going to go to Van's uh, data here. I'm going to copy her um, uh, data down here and I go shift control arrow down and then I'm going to go shift arrow right one. I'll do control C. Come on over here. And I think I'm going to come up maybe here and I'll, I'll try to control V here. I'm going to pull, pull this down one. Okay. So now there's wavelength and absorbance, right? So now in order to calculate epsilon, right, I need to know the concentration because, you know, A equals epsilon C times B, right? So in order to go from absorbance to epsilon, I need to know the concentration. Okay, so uh, let me change the share so you all can see. Hold on just a sec. Uh, new share. There we go. Is that a little bit better, hopefully, Solomon? Yes, sir. Thank you so much. I'm sorry. It sucks. <laughs> no, that's good. I can, I can see it now. It was, just, it was a little bit too squinty. Like, it's too hard for me to see. Thank you. Right. Okay. So, Van, are you ready to be my guinea pig? Just say so you Okay. Know. The concentration is our concentration from the, uh, the max. Let me see. Right. Now let's see, let's see let's let let's let Excel calculate it right. Formulates formula it's four oh eight right. B is one. How much did you weigh? Point 0.0290 gram. 0 0.0290 grams. Yes. Right. And you dissolve that in 50 mils or 25? Dissolve it into uh, 500 millilit and then I uh, dilute it to 25 millilit. All right. And then do you know how much you pipetted over? Uh, 25 micromol, mi mi microlit. Okay. Like, 25 microliters to 25 milliliters, right. And do you know what the peak absorbance was that you got? Uh, 
Do you, you know how you look on the printout and it tells you the absorbance? Um, you know, there's a graph and it shows you the- um, Yes, yes. We, I, we, we did, did the, the label. Yeah. And we, we took a picture, but I don't know where the picture. Oh, okay. I just I I want to generate the copy uh, the information into the graph, and in uh, order to get the graph itself, ah, I yeah, didn't yeah. do okay. it. All That's right. why I'm no asking problem. you no how, how how to do it. No problem here. So let us just see here. So the number of moles of dye here. This will equal the um. Uh, mass of dye, right? M dot, okay, all right. So next thing we gotta know, know how to do here in Excel, right? Is I'm gonna name a bunch of cells. And this is gonna go quick, and most of you are gonna, are gonna, are gonna miss it. And then you're gonna give me shitty reviews, and then I'm gonna drink myself to death. Now we're just going to go back and rewatch the video. In Las Vegas. I, and I'm going to drink Starbucks until I die of, a, of an epileptic fit, not, a, not an alcoholic fit. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to highlight FW, and then I'm going to highlight all these cells just to the right, right? F.W, B.0, M.0, V.0, V.1, V.2, A.0, just like that, right? Highlight it. Ready to roll. Are you guys following along? Then we're going to go up to the top menu, click on formulas. And over here where this is called the define names tab, I'm going to say create from selection. Boom. Create from selection, left column. It guessed that these are the names. And I'm going to say, OK. Right? Now I'm going to do the same here. I'm going to, I'm going to highlight and die da, da, down to epsilon. Then I'm going to say, create from selection. Left column, OK. All right. So now, what has this given me the ability to do? I can now say this equals M zero, right? Now M zero, which is a name here, it's the name of this cell. I'm gonna click on this guy, M zero, divided by FW. Does that make sense, everybody? It's just using names in Excel, but I've got to emphasize this because some people it's old hat and some people, they haven't done this before. And there's a couple of cognitive things to, to get through. One is like use of variable names. And two is um, just knowing that um, Excel does it here. Boom. So I'm gonna, oops. I'm gonna say enter there. And that gives the number of moles of dye, right? C0 of the die is going to equal N of the die. Notice I click on that cell, it gives me the name, divided by V0. Right? Let me let me make this bigger. Okay. So CF is equal to C0 times uh, oh, this is, I missed three, three, um, three zeros here, hold on. V1 divided by V2. Now this uh, this V one here is um, it's off by three zeros. So I'm going to add one, two, three zeros there. 
and that should get us down in range. So this is one, two, three, four, five, one point four two micromolar. Right? Now the extinction coefficient requires A max. So let's find A max, right? And to do that, let's um, let's plot up here. We'll go to um, format, or sorry, chart design, select data. Oops. And we'll edit series one, such that the Y values here are actually, um, not in column U, but let's put them into, let's put them right here. And say shift control arrow down. And these guys here, I'm gonna adjust these guys to be right here. Shift control arrow down. And then I'll make the name uh, absorbance. Okay. I'm going to say okay there. Now let's see what happens to the plot. There we go. Now, the peak absorbance here should be right around uh, 590 or so. So let's plot this, uh, let's say 590 to 610. Maybe 580. There we go. And let's also um, So I think right here at 590, we're probably at lambda max. And this is 0.211. Point 0.2114. Let's put that here. So this is the absorbance at the maximum at the at 590. 0 0.2114. Okay. So the extinction coefficient then is equal to uh, the absorbance divided by the concentration. Is that making sense? So far so good? Okay, so that's uh, 148,000 per molar per centimeter, right? And the lambda max was 590. Okay. So now let's do a funny thing here. Now let's calculate epsilon here. And we're going to say epsilon is going to be equal to um, the absorbance divided by C0, or no, CF. Right, A equals epsilon C. 
So epsilon equals A over C. At 900 nanometers, we've got A over C. There's only one concentration, right? So that comes out to a weird negative number. That's just noise. Now I will copy that down by double clicking in the lower right hand corner of the cell. Double click there. And I'm in over here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, click on this series. I'm going to come over here. And I'm actually going to click on the frame. I'm going to drag it over. And I'm going to drag the label over. That makes sense. Shortcut. Good. So I hit enter there, or I just click click around there. Now it looks the same, but the values are large there. And now I'm gonna uh, let's say go from 200 to 800. There we go. Beautiful. So this is all of the um, uh, finding epsilon, right? So part of the part of this here is uh, epsilon here. This is simply equal to epsilon, right? Because we already found that. Now the question is, uh, this is always equal to epsilon, right? The question is, how do we find the uncertainty in epsilon? And I'd like to do a little tiny um, uh, sleight of hand for you, which is, um, uh, uh, let me uh, let me switch over to my document camera here if I can. I'm not sure I'll be able to. Nope. Darn it. Got to figure out a way to get more than one camera on this Windows machine. If there's more than one camera, it, it, it always takes one of them out. It's actually more than, it's like it can do the screen in one camera. But if I have my document camera, I can't have my face camera. So maybe I can just switch that over here. I don't know. I don't want to experiment right now. Um, so uh, how am I going to do this? I'm going to stop my video. I'm going to switch it to document camera. I'm going to try to open it. There we go. I'm going to share my document camera. Come on. Gotta get the share going. Okay. Well, come on, you can do better. There we go. Boy, I got old. 
old hands now. Aging is a disease. I hate it. I feel like a kid, but I don't look like a kid anymore. Just remember, getting old stinks, but it beats the alternative. Right. That's true. That's true. Well, you know, I made a mistake. I made a big mistake, which was I listened to this guy. He's a Harvard biologist, and um, he's convinced that he can really extend lifespan and health span. And um, so I'm taking all kinds of supplements now. I don't know if it's going to work. Probably not. But let's see here. Uh, so um, you know how if you have something like um, A equals epsilon times C times B, right? And um, C you get from a, a, a different uh, audit trail, right, where you got um, uh, uh, concentration is equal to mass over formula weight times uh, oh, mass formula weight times 1 over V0 times uh, V1 over V2. Right. That's actually the, the way to get from experimentals like mass and volumes to a theoretical value like extinction coefficient. Right. So uh, A is equal to epsilon times, I'll just substitute this in, M over FW times 1 over V0 times V1 over V2 times B, right? So epsilon is then going to be equal to A times FW over M times V0 times V2 over V1 times 1 over B. Right. So this is this is our real the real audit trail that we're working with. So um, you know uh, the only things I think I need to clear up here are that uh, V zero is the uh, flask you dissolve um, the crystal violet in right. Uh, V1 is the pipette, and V2 is a ball flask. Right? So that's just for, for clarifying those points, right? But now the question is how do we compute, and, and epsilon we're done, but how do we compute the uncertainty estimate in epsilon, S sub epsilon, right? Well, let me just leap ahead here and say that you do this using differential calculus. And you say S epsilon is D epsilon DA times S of A. And I'm going to add a bunch of terms and I'm going to square everything, right? Plus D epsilon DM times SM plus d epsilon dv0 times s v0 plus d epsilon dv2 times s v2 plus d epsilon dv1. Uh, I, I put the 2 there, right? So I'll do the 1 times s v1, right? And these are all squared. Because it's a um, sort of a vector sum, right? So now my question for you all is what's a convenient way to compute all these partials? Well, um, d epsilon dA is just all this, all the remaining cabbage there, right? So let me, um, 
let me change pages here and then I'll then I'll um, then I'll go from there, right? So I'm going to say that um, epsilon is equal to a times fw over m times v0 times v2 over v1 times o1 over b. And partial epsilon partial a is equal to all of this junk here, right? Which is just, you know, fw over m times v0 times v2 over v1 times 1 over b, right? It's, ah, it's, com it's, it's complicated, not really difficult, right? So let me offer you then that if you know epsilon, the epsilon dA is simply equal to epsilon over A, right? Because this is all of it, which is epsilon divided by A. Does that make sense, man? Yes, sir. Excellent. You're a good student. I knew that. <laughs> Taryn's writing. I know she's doing a good job. She's writing. Casey, are you connected to this or are you? Yeah, good. Excellent. Cool. Solomon, you doing okay? Okay, he's probably getting a cup of coffee. So, now, similarly, with like, um, you could say that like, um, you know, A, FW, V0, V2, these are all just numerator guys, right? Now, uh, partial epsilon, partial, let's do a denominator, M, right? Is equal to uh, minus everything uh, minus uh, so wait this is this is equal to um, epsilon over uh, hold on I'm trying to think how to do this without messing it up too badly the the punchline is that this is equal to epsilon over m. And the thing about it is that um, for partial with respect to m, where the function is m to the minus 1, then we've got minus f times m to the minus 2, right? Which is equal to um, F, which is this, divided by M. <laughs> and it's actually minus that, right? But um, then we're going to square it and we'll make it positive again, right? Because the minus will cancel in the squaring process. So that's a really, really horrible excuse for a proof. But I really can't do better. I'm just going to go down a rabbit hole and it won't be good for anybody. So let me move forward here. Or sort of back and then forward, right? And... The back part is we have these partials, right? And I'm going to offer you that um, that uh, these partials up here. I'll just rewrite them here. We've got um, s epsilon squared is equal to a partial epsilon 
partial a squared times s a squared, which is equal to um, epsilon over a squared times s a squared. Right, and then there's a whole bunch of pluses down here: partial epsilon, partial m, partial epsilon, partial b zero partial epsilon, partial V2, partial epsilon, partial V1, right? All these squared, 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 SM squared, SV0 squared, SV2 squared, SV1 squared, right? And this in turn will be equal to epsilon over M squared, SM squared, epsilon over V0 squared, SV0 squared, epsilon over V2 squared, SV2 squared, epsilon over V1 squared, SV1 squared, right? So it'll be, it'll be the sum of all these components, right? I'm sorry the notation's a little bit non-standard, but it, it, will, it will come out in the wash, I promise. Nicholas. Hi. Do you believe me so far? Yes, I believe you, Dr. Terrell. Thank you. That's an amazing vote of confidence. I appreciate it. <laughs> Does anybody not believe me? I believe you, Dr. Terrell. Is that you, Solomon? Yeah, I went to the restroom, so that's my answer. Oh, that's know. fine. That's fine. That's fine. Yeah. So, um, Third. So what I'd like to do now, I'll let I'll let y'all kind of finish copying and then, then I'm gonna go back to the Excel sheet and I'll put in all the all this cabbage and we'll see it'll come right up. And in the end we're gonna get the same answer that Van should get. Right? That way when Van turns her in, I know what to expect. Uh -huh. yeah, I'm jealous. Van already knows what hers is supposed to look like. I know. I know. She'll know she's doing it right. Well, or she or she's doing it wrong. She might even know that. <sighs> All righty. Okay. So let me change my share over to um Taryn, I I will um I promise this will be available for you, okay? Okay, good. I'm going to change the share to the report, right? So now, um, now there's a whole bunch of recaps here, right? This is equal to M0, right? This is equal to F, oops, F dot W. Equal to V0, oops, equal to V0 equal to V, oops, ah, darn it, hitting it, equal to V1, equal to V2, equal to A0, equal to B0, there we go. Now, now here comes a super easy but super tricky part. Estimate uncertainties, right? So what we're trying to do here is give an honest representation of the statistical uncertainty in this value. I.e., if we were to take the same amount of stuff and weigh it several times, what would be the um, uncertainty in that measurement? right? And 
there's a range of right answers. The first right answer here might be take the last digit and use the last digit. So what's the last digit in the mass of, a, of, a, of, a, of one of these Mettler balances? It is 0 0.0001. Whoops, no, no quote there. Put 001, right? And that is actually not a terrible estimate. I think it's probably closer to five. But either way you do it, you get the right answer, right, man? I cannot discriminate based on your guesses here. Right? Now, the formula weight is probably going to be substantially more precise. But there's really weird stuff that goes on with formula weight like isotopic distributions and stuff like that. So I don't really know how to answer this one, but let's just say 0 0.01. It's by far the, the most precise out of all these values that we have. So it ain't gonna, it ain't gonna make any difference. Yeah, SV0, this is the standard uncertainty in a 50 mil vol flask. Point oh, uh, oh, oh, that's the milliliters, uh, oh, five. Zero point zero 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 five. Now, uh, oh, I'm sorry, this is, this is, I'm sorry, actually, this is the, um, ah. Oh, wait, where did I get zero for V1? That can't be right. Add some decimals there. Zero 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 two five. That's twenty five microliters. Oh, equal to V. Ah, no, come on. Dot one. There we go. Sorry. So basically, this is 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0.00025x, right? So this is in the 0 0.1, this is a milliliter, microliter, nanoliter, about 500 nanoliters. So let's make this guy 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, uh, this should be five times to the minus seven here. There we go. V2, this is gonna be the same as V0. All right. The absorbance is probably 0 0.001. Path length is 0 0.001. Now, Partial epsilon with respect to M here, this is going to equal epsilon, right, divided by M. Right, this will equal epsilon divided by what? After the zero. Sorry. Epsilon molecular weight. weight. Yes. F dot W. 
There we go. Equal to epsilon divided by V zero. So epsilon divided by V dot one equals epsilon divided by V dot two equal to epsilon, oops, epsilon divided by A equal to epsilon divided by B zero, right? Now, um, Okay, so now we got to give some more names out here. I'm going to name these cells for this guy. Okay. I'm going to go to formulas, name manager, create from selection, left column is correct. Now I'm going to go here, I'm going to use the right column because I can't use a slash in a name, right? This is going to be the partial with respect to M, partial with respect to F0, et cetera. So create from selection. And I'm going to skip top row, and I'm going to use right column for names. Okay. So now on this guy, this guy is called PM, P.M, right? So now S, S, S epsilon here, this is... This is really the final piece. <clears throat> S epsilon is going to be equal to the square root of a bunch of stuff, right? The square root of the sum of a bunch of squares, right? So the square root of, oops, come on you. There we go. The square root of P dot M squared time times S dot M squared, right? Plus P dot F zero, or FW, sorry, squared times S dot FW squared plus P dot V zero, V zero squared times S dot V zero squared. Plus P dot, oops. P dot V1, V1 squared times S dot V1 squared plus P dot V2 squared times S dot V2 squared plus P dot A squared times S dot A squared plus P dot B, oops, P dot, dot B squared times S dot B squared I think that's it. Okay, comes out to 4,000, right? The formula text here is gonna be equal to formula text, open parenthesis, put the cursor in that cell, close parenthesis. Boom, like that. Give us a chance to sort of audit it, PM, SM, PFW, SFW, PV0, SV0, PV1, SV1, PV2, SV2, PA, SA, PB, SB squared, all square rooted, all summed, I 
think we're good, right? So this is going to equal s. Oops. Okay. Got to do. I got to do one more uh, name here. Let me call this s epsilon. Bottom row. Okay. And so Van, I'm gonna change your report from super, super, super late to on time. All right. And feeling much better now. Yes, good. <laughs> so this is uh, due in like, is it due like a week from Friday or something? That sounds right. That might be before some people have finished it. Uh, I have down the 19th. OK. Let me check when the 19th is here. Uh, that's what? That two weeks. Okay, so it's it's two weeks from Friday, so that should be that should be okay. If that's a problem for anybody, just let me know, and I'll give you another week. But but um, but let's let the due date be two weeks from from Friday. All right. So now I'm going to get started on the Raman one. Okay. So let me see here. Uh, I'm going to change the share. All righty. So um, not everybody has done this. And so um, I can't explain it very extremely well, right? But um, Let me give you a sort of an outline here, right? That just, that's good enough. So there is, um, there are three, there, there's basically four spectra that you, you're gonna acquire. One is for acetone, one is for ethyl acetate, one is for toluene, and one is for an unknown mixture of these three. Okay. So um, the way that looks is that there is, um, uh, for example, this orange one is, or this sort of golden one is the, the unknown, right? And it's the peak, it's the top most one in most cases, you know? And this is comprised of some blue and some red, right? And this is basically every point on this graph is composed of, you know, in theory, it's some signal from the blue, which is the um, acetone, the red, which is the ethyl acetate, and the green, which is the toluene, you know? So, um, uh, so, you know, Raman, Raman's, it, it's a nice spectroscopy where you can shine a laser into something, and get back this complex signal, which is really like a, um, it's a scattering, a light scattering signal. And, um, the, uh, uh, and it's a vibrational spectrum, you know? So, so it's, it's got a lot of detail about the molecules. 
the um, each peak uh, represents a certain motion of the atoms in the molecule, you know. So, um, uh, for example, uh, like if you have a real simple molecule, like um, like even H two, you know, this di dihydrogen, it only has one uh, vibrational mode. You know, dihydrogen just stretches. And um, uh, and if you do Raman on dihydrogen, you will see that mode. You know, you, you get some compressed hydrogen, shine a laser through it, collect the backscattered light, and you will see a um, uh, this mode. This this, and what it, what it is is it's light that scatters off the molecules and shifts by one vibrational frequency. So you know that the light that comes in, let's say the light that you're using is at 20,000 wave numbers, just that's like mid visible, right? Just as an example. And let's say the hydrogen stretch, the H2 stretch is 4,000 wave numbers. You know, so on an FTIR, if you could see it there, you can't. But if you could see it on an FTIR, it would be a sharp peak right around 4,000 wave numbers. The place you see it in a Raman is 20,000 minus 4,000 equals 16,000 wave numbers. Right? That's the frequency it shows at shows up at. So what is done is the spectrum is plotted versus the laser wavelength. And therefore it's a Raman shift. So these are the red shifts of all the peaks that show up when you shine the laser into this sample. Right? So now let's figure out how to how to analyze this mixture. I'm just moving on here, man. I'm just moving on. <laughs> Sorry. I'll make this a little bit smaller, right? And I'm just going to show you the linest part right now. Right. So these data here, these are. Um, uh, these are what we acqu acquire from the instrument, right? I'll just sort of highlight them, some non-offensive color probably, hopefully. Maybe light, light purple, whatever, right? So these are, the, these are the data from the instrument, right? And there's acetone, ethyl acetate, toluene, and unknown, right? These are the, these are the, um, the data, right? Now, wave number... It's tempting to think you'll use that in the analysis, but you won't, right? So there's intensity, 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 and intensity. And these three intensities are supposed to add up to this one after you multiply by the uh, least squares coordinates. But wave number is just there to order them. And we use them to plot, right? But we don't use them for the analysis. Okay, enough of that. So what we're going to do here, first and foremost, is we're going to do what's called a linest, right? And I'll just wipe this out and I'll retype it for you. So this is equal to linest, right? That's just an Excel function. Linest of the known y's, which are here. So I'm going to go the the ethyl acetate. Oops, I'm sorry. The known wise started acetone. They go through ethyl acetate and toluene, right? And uh, and I'm going to I'm going to go shift control arrow down, and I'll go to the bottom of this list, right? So B4 to D2092, right? Okay. 
Now I'm going to write a comma. Now the x values here are the unknown intensities, right? So the unknown intensity is the x value. And that is here, shift control arrow down there. So the y's have to be this contiguous block, meaning column, column, column. They can't be separated everywhere, right? And the x is always, uh, the x is always one column, right? Now constants, we're gonna say false. This is like, do you just wanna add an offset to everything? We don't wanna do that. If you do y equals mx plus b, this is where b shows up. We don't want a b in this case. And then uh, let's let's get some additional statistics, right? So that's going to uh, report back more than just the three coefficients, right? So once I've done entered, once I've entered all those things, I haven't hit enter or anything. I've just I've just entered this formula. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to say shift control and enter all at once. Shift, control, enter, right? And everything goes to crap. That's what was supposed to happen. I meant that to happen. Shit. <laughs> well, for one thing, I should not have done it there. So I'm gonna go control Z. Uh, Oh, I got the, oh, I'm so sorry. It's, I got my Y and my X reversed. So the Y value is the one column and the X value is the three columns, right? And then I say shift control and enter there. And then that's how that comes out. Oh, I'm sorry about that. But now when you plot these guys out here, Right, that's the unknown. And then like, well, actually, I'm not going to go into this yet. We'll, we'll discuss how to do that later. But um, there's the there's the results, right? There's the uncertainty in the results, right? So 4.28 plus or minus 0.06% toluene, right? That's what this analysis shows. 49.99 plus minus 0.22% ethyl acetate, 45.21 plus minus 0.18% acetone. Now, if we sum all of these components up right here, sum across these components, that should equal 100%. And it comes damn close. And then this is not, this doesn't make sense here, actually. <laughs> Forget that. So, um, uh, I think that's all, that's all I have for you today. Um, on this analysis, right? And then there's a little bit more to this. For example, when we plot it, we want to be able to make a component of acetone, right? Which is this guy here times the acetone standard. This guy here times the ethyl acetate standard. This guy here is the toluene component times the toluene standard, right? And then the sum of these guys should equal the, the sum of these guys should equal the intensity of that one. And that's what we plot down here. The red line is, or the blue line is the unknown. The blue line is completely obscured. The red line on top is the sum of the components. And then the gray line here, which is on its own axis off to the right is the residuals, which is the unknown minus the uh, calculated components.
So the residuals are, these should be small random numbers everywhere. Because the, the residuals are the unknown minus the calculated value. And if it were perfect, then these would all be zero. But there's always noise, so they're, they're random. Plus, there is some systematic character to these guys. And one of them is right here. And then another one is there's a bipolar feature right here. So this could be an impurity in one of the uh, samples. I'm not sure. All righty. So enough for today. Uh, thank you guys very much. Homework due a week from tomorrow, I think. And, and if you want any support with the homework, let me know and I will. I will help you out, I think, very much, I hope. Thank you so much for explaining the Raman lab report, Dr. Toe. I really appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you, Solomon. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for doing your job as a student, too. I love it. Taryn, how are you feeling? Good? Good. Glad to hear it. Thank you, Dr. T. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. See you later. Thanks, Dr. Terrell. Thanks, thanks, thanks.